Welcome. I am Mr. Fearless, and behind me is my fully automatic, fully AFK, villager crop farm for 1.11, the village and pillage update for Minecraft Bedrock. This farm can produce 6 to 8 stacks of potatoes or carrots per hour, 2 stacks of beetroot per hour, or 1.5 stacks of wheat per hour. If you're looking to get plenty of emeralds through trading for crops, or just want to breed plenty of animals up without ever lifting a finger, then this is the farm for you. So let's get started and build it. Before we can ever place a single block for the farm, we need to make sure that this white boundary is 50 blocks away from any other village in the world. And that includes any breeders or anything to do with villagers. This white boundary is the very edge of the farm. It's 23 wide on one edge and 26 wide on the other. So just make sure that there are no villages anywhere near this farm. The next very important area is this red area right here. And this is actually where the village itself center is going to be. This is where they'll sleep at night and where they'll restock their trades during the day. And more importantly, it's where they'll be stuck whenever you turn off the farm. And because of all that, you do not want this to lie over a chunk boundary, which is this blue line and this red line here. They exist throughout the entire world every 16 blocks. But if you're many, many blocks away from spawn, you're not going to know exactly where these boundaries are without doing math, or, as you can see here, I have a texture pack installed. I believe this texture pack only works on Windows 10, but I may be mistaken. As you can see here in my global resources, I have it right here, a chunk visualizer. So if you can't install that, won't install that, or don't want to install that, you can go to any slime chunk finder to see all the chunk boundaries in the world. Just type in the coordinates of where you're thinking of putting the farm, and it'll show you the boundaries that you want to avoid for this section. And if you want to avoid those boundaries, you're going to need to know exactly where this is in the farm. So starting on the short edge, right? This is the short edge. Starting on the very edge of the short edge, we're going to count out 12 blocks. And that's right here. And that will take you to the very center of your farm, at least on this edge. And you're going to count out exactly one. Then we're going to start the count for the villager area itself, which is five blocks in, like this. So one, two, three, four, five. And on the third block, we're going to go out one and put one on either side. And we're going to do that on both sides. Out one in the very center, and then put one on either side. Then, as you can see here, this is the area close to the edge. We're going to go away from that edge, so towards the center of the farm, and put little wings on those three blocks we just placed. So these three blocks has a little wing. And you'll get this little arrow or bell shape. And that's exactly where your villagers are going to be placed. And you might want to walk, mark that out so you know it's not over one of these boundaries. Once you have that settled, you probably want to think about where you're going to actually get your villagers from. If you got a breeder or another village nearby, make sure it's 50 blocks away, though. You may want this to be pointing towards them. So then it's much easier to move them. From my own experience, it's a big hassle to move villages, villagers from village to village because they'll get confused and they may wander thousands of blocks away. So you definitely want this to be pointing to where you're going to get them from. And once you have all that sorted, you can now start the farm. Let's do a quick rundown of the materials you're going to need for the farm. You're going to need plenty of stairs and regular blocks, as well as glass. But these can be any types you want. I just picked my favorites. You're going to need dirt if you're not building in a biome that has dirt or if you're building underground. You're going to need plenty of torches or another alternate light source to keep away mobs and to help the farm grow at night. You're going to need chests and that all depends on how many chests you want to use in your storage system. You're going to need a hoe to till the soil and at least an infinite water source. You're also going to need some very specific materials and you can see here that I have many of the very expensive or the harder to get materials here and this is the exact numbers of those materials you'll need so feel free to pause the video or come back to this if you think you're missing something or you're looking for something that you may have forgotten when it comes to villagers though you're going to need eight stacks of seeds one bed and one composter per villager this farm will work with one villager two villagers and three villagers just make sure you don't have any more beds than you have villagers if they breed, you'll, they'll produce a baby that has nothing in its inventory, and that could ruin the farm. On top of that, depending on how many you want, you're also going to need 41 seeds extra off the filter. Now keep in mind that these are seeds, but they don't have to be. They could be potatoes, carrots, beetroot seeds, or these seeds, depending on what farm you're using. Just make sure each villager is having the same type of seed or f uh, food in their inventory. This does not work with multiple different farm types at the same time. 
we're going to start with the farming area, which is this green area here. This is the, where the villagers plant their crops and they're harvested by water. So, over here by where the villagers sit and sleep and where the village itself is, we're going to go out one block and then place four blocks on either side. Remember that this can be any block you want. It doesn't have to be dark oak. And then we're going to place three blocks in an L shape twice. So one, two. Followed by five regular blocks in a line. So it should look like this. We're just going to kind of repeat this over and over again. So we're going to have three L's this time. One, two, three. So just like that. Followed by again, five blocks. Then we're going to go another three L's. Another five blocks. And finally, to match it up back to the beginning, we're just going to put in two little L's. So in the end, it should look like this. When we were just following the pattern I had on the ground earlier. Next, we're going to work on the water sources. This area by the villager stuff is a little bit more complicated, so we'll talk about that last. Right now, go to any one of those these three, three sides, and we're going to place in some stairs to mark out those water sources we need. So we're going to place one stair sideways like this, and then three stairs flat, against the wall, and another one sideways like this. So when you're done, it should look quite like this. And then we're going to go again to one of those other five areas, those five block areas. There's three of them, like this, this, and this. I'll go to one of them and repeat the exact same thing. Five stairs in a row with the ones on the side slanted like this. So it forms that shape. And that's so the water doesn't leak towards the back. And so we can put redstone underneath to access the pistons which we'll take care of in a moment. Right now, we're going to now place some stairs in each nook of these L's, like this. So it's in the nook of the L, just like this. We're going to do that to all the sides. So again, in the nook, we're going to place the stairs. And even over here, we're going to place a stair in the nook. And when it's all said and done, we should have it look like this. Next, we're going to tackle the side with the villagers. In the very edges, we're going to put stairs again, kind of like this, where it's in the nook. And then we're going to tackle the very center, which is where it connects to the village. And we're going to delete these three blocks. Then we're going to place on either side of the red two stairs, because those are both going to be waterlogged. But the stair in the middle is going to be a little different. That's where the villagers themselves are going to come from. They're going to be up here, and they're going to walk down this way. So we don't want that to be waterlogged. This one and this one will be, this will not. So I suggest making a different stair type. But we'll go into that a little bit later when we deal with the water. Now we're going to work on the underground collection system for the farm. And in order to do that, we need to find the exact center. And all we need to do is find the center of two of the sides. So this is the center of that one. This is the center of that one. And we follow them till they meet, which is right here. Then we're going to dig down four blocks, like this. And we're going to see where this purple X is which is to the left of the villager area. And we're going to dig out six blocks in that direction. And we're going to dig out a six block, three tall area, like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we're going to dig out two blocks on either side, like this. Again, three high, to give us plenty of room to work. And we're going to do that all the way to the end. Once we have the area dug out, we're going to go back to where the hole we came from was, and cover that in one slab on the bottom. Next, we're going to take out our dropper and place it one block to the right of that slab. And we're then going to put a hopper right below the slab going into the dropper. And now, all we have to do is hook up the dropper. Going out from the dropper, we're going to take out two blocks and a third one like this. So we'll have a comparator coming out directly out of the dropper, a repeater coming out of the comparator, pointing into a block. Then we're going to take three blocks and go all the way back to the comparator and line those blocks with redstone dust. Now all we have to do is uh, connect this redstone up to the dropper. You may have to dig out a little bit more space, but that's fine. So we're going to go from the redstone dust out one block like this, then go down and put two blocks towards the d dropper. Then directly build the dropper, and behind it we're also going to place a block. Now all you have to do is run some redstone on those blocks we placed, and we should have a fully functioning smart dropper. Anything you place in here will be dispensed. Now on a server or a realm, these can get a little bit laggy, and it might lock up. So you might just want to increase the delay a little bit. You can always add another repeater right there, and increase the delay even more if it's not working. 
Now, let's work on the ice road that's going to take us to where our, our eventual bubble column will be. Starting at the block below the dropper, we're going to go out three ice blocks, then down one, and out three more. And on that third and final ice block we placed, we're going to count out six more blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And on the seventh block, we're going to place our single soul sand. And that's eventually where our bubble column is going to be. Going back to the beginning, we're going to cover up the entire thing in blocks, so none of our water leaks out. We don't want to lose all of our items, or ruin our redstone. And before we place the final block right here, we're going to place our water. And then we're going to quickly try to cover it up so we don't get, ruin our redstone. So let's see if I can actually do this. There we go. Then over here, we're going to go back to the soul sand. And notice that the water goes and stops right before the soul sand. And that's perfect. So we're going to place a sign right there. Right at the block before the soul sand. So the water from the bubble column and the water from the ice road do not mix. And now we're ready to start the actual bubble column. Now we're going to work on the bubble elevator and the item sorter. So starting on the soul sand, we're going to place a block all around us, including on the sign. Then starting from this block right here, we're going to count up 18 blocks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Now, this is where it gets a little different. We're going towards that villager area there. That's where we're going to store our items. So, on that column closest to that area, which is this one right here, because we're going this way, we're only going to go up 16. So two shorter than this one. But the other two will all go up to 18, like this. So, you sh when you're done, you should have three columns that are at approximately 18 blocks tall, and one that's at 16. And that's because this block is where we're going to place the ice block. And that's where our, we're going to continue our ice road. So from this ice block, we're going to count out three more. So one, two, three. So we'll have four total ice blocks. Then from the furthermost ice block, we're going to go down one and over one towards the villager area. Then starting from this ice block, we're going to count out exactly 10 blocks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we should have 10 total right here. Now we're going to put it into the hoppers for the sorters. Right here, in the very center of the villager area, so we're going to place one hopper, like this. So it should be in the very center like that. And at the very end, we're going to place another regular block, delete the last ice block, and place a hopper going that way. Now, you should have the entire ice road completed up here. All we need to do is enclose it so nothing leaks. So we're going to go around it just like we did before, below, and cover it all with blocks. Up here, you want a nice little barrier so nothing flies off that way. And above the water area, you want a single block the bubble column area, you want a single block so the bubbles don't force items way out and miss the uh, ice road, because they can go everywhere. On bedrock edition, you only need to place a single water above a column like this, and it'll all form source blocks. So all we need to do is place one water block, and we have it all completed. You should see in a few moments that bubbles will form, and that means that this is entirely done. And next, we work on the item sorter. And there's the bubbles. So as we flow down here, we're going to find the hopper. It's a little hard to see because the water is opaque in this texture pack, but that's where our hopper is. And we're going to start our item sorter by placing a block right next to it. This is actually a silent list for our uh, item sorter. It's one of the best in the game. I have the, a link to his video about the sorter in the description, and it should pop up in the top right corner if I, all th things go correctly. So if you want to check that out, you can. But we're going to start by taking a comparator directly out of that block that we placed, and then place a glass block right next to the block that the comparator is on, with a piece of redstone on top. Next, we're going to come out from this block, the glass block, away from the comparator and place a single block, and a block below that. We're going to delete the block on top by the uh, glass. Then we're going to go below the glass and do the exact same thing. Place two blocks and delete the one in the middle. And we can run redstone along this. If you've done it correctly, the redstone should connect all the way to here. Now we're going to add our piston right here. Place a piece of obsidian in the front of that. That's so it's not so laggy. Finally, we're going to take a redstone torch, 
and place it on the piston and a block above that redstone torch. Now we need to get our hoppers out and set those up. So, again, we're going to put a hopper here and a hopper there. So now, we should have a good working item, item filter. You're going to take four items that you're never going to end up in the system, something like ice, place four of them like this, and then you're going to take whatever item you're using to farm. So if you're using potatoes, you'd use potatoes, you know, seeds, you'd use seeds. Here we're going to use seeds. And we're going to place 41 or just a stack of them. And you'll see if you put a stack in, it'll slowly trickle down to exactly 41 items. Or if you just have 41, you can place 41 in there. Now we're going to work on building the AFK area and the area where all the items will be stored. Starting one to the right of the hopper for the item sorter, against the ice road we created, we're going to place one block, and then continue down all the way to seven blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The seventh block is the floor level. You can continue that out as long as you like. You can even continue the walls up if you like. Just leave room right here where the item sorter is, because we're going to work on that in a little bit. But first, we're going to tackle the Overlord's Overflow Storage, which is right there. This is pretty simple. You can either have one chest, if you want to skip out on resources like that, or you can have a slew of chests if you want to have long AFK sessions. In order to do that, you'll take the chests up like this, one block lower than the hoppers. You can see the hoppers are right there and the chests are one block lower. And you want to continue this hopper line at the top off in that direction. Like that. And underneath those hoppers, you'll just put it, a single hopper in each chest. Sometimes it's hard to place uh, items on a, a block with an inventory, but we'll get it eventually. There we go. And like I said, you could continue this indefinitely if you want more chests and more columns, and just continue that top row of hoppers along and the hoppers behind them, but that can get expensive pretty quickly, so we're just going to keep it cheap for now. Next we're going to tackle the item sorters and where it's going to go. Now we can finish off the item sorter. In order to do that, we're going to take a chest, place it one block beneath and to the left of the last hopper we place placed for the sorter, which should be right here going into the AFK area. Next, we're going to delete that hopper because it's facing the wrong direction. And place one directly on top of the chest going into it like this. And replace that deleted hopper with one going into the correct hopper. Next, we're going to place a random block here. One block below and to the right of the chest. With a hopper beneath the chest going into it like this. We're going to delete that random block because this is where the minecart chest is going to go move back and forth. And distribute the items to the three droppers that are going to drop the items to your villagers. Those three droppers are going to be placed at floor level of the AFK area, right there. Then we're going to put three hoppers on top of them, like this. Next, we're going to pull out our powered rails and put them on the two end hoppers, like this. And have an unpowered regular rail in the middle. In order to power the rightmost powered rail, we're going to place a block next to the hopper with a torch on top, like that. The one powered rail I'm standing on, the left one, it's going to be powered a little differently. It's going to be powered using an on-off switch we're going to install a little bit later. And that's because minecart chests and minecart hoppers can get stuck if they're unloaded. They'll just stop moving entirely and they won't respond to the redstone signals. So in order to fix that, we'll just turn it off and make sure it sits right here and doesn't move before we walk away. Then we're going to put on two blocks on either end of the hopper system, or the rail system, so then the minecart doesn't go flying off. And finally, We'll place our minecart with chest right there on top of the unpowered the rail which is how it will sit whenever the system's off this is a very good system to have because you can input items into here directly feeding the hoppers if they're running low but at the same time if the system starts to fill up you'll be able to grab items out of here finally we're going to get to finishing the villagers area itself the villager area is going to go directly below these droppers and below the afk spot right where we marked it out earlier. We're going to start here at the very beginning where we placed these two stairs and we're going to place a third one. So we'll have three stairs in total. 
at this first third stairs level is where the villagers are going to be standing and sleeping. So we're going to start, up, start off with some hoppers that are going to be used to collect the materials that they share with each other and the ones that are dropped by the hoppers that they never pick up. And we're going to place a placement block that we're just going to use temporarily and another one on top of it like that. So off of the second stair, the middle stair, and then we're going to actually start the floor and delete those two random blocks we used. And this is going to be the floor that they're going to stand on. It's going to look something like this. So we're going to have a pattern that looks like going around the stairs, the top stair, with one in the back and one off to the side like this. The villagers can get stuck in hoppers and they may get trapped, so we're going to cover most of this in carpet. But these three are where the villagers' beds are going to be, and this is where you have to decide how many villagers you want. This design works up to three villagers, but you don't need three. You can survive with two or one, but you can only place as many beds as you're going to be using villagers, otherwise they'll breed and ruin the farm. So if you're only using one villager, you only place one bed. If you're using three, you place three. Just like this. As you can see, this very closely matches the pattern we've placed on the ground. Except for right here. And that's because right here is where we're going to place some sticky pistons to close the door for them. So two pieces of glass so they never suffocate because they will get trapped in the door occasionally. And then behind that we're going to place some random blocks like this to place the pistons off of. And we have most of their area finished now. All we need to do is form up the walls. Villagers can actually sleep on a bed if the headrest is covered. They only need the bottom part of the bed to be open for them to sleep. So we're going to cover the headrest so there's less room for them to maneuver, maneuver in here. And we're going to cover up all the walls. So there's no escape for them. Here, in this area, is where we're going to place the composters. They need to be able to access the composters, or they will get desynced and become un permanently unemployed, and that's not something you want. So they have to actually be able to access them, even if you're not going to trade with them. They have to be able to walk over and stand next to them. And we're going to cover all this up with blocks. You can also cover this up now and meet it with the wall down here, like this. And now we have the village area completely enclosed. All we need to do is fill in the ceiling, leave a space for the droppers to drop the stuff. We're done. And it should look like this when you're done. Three composters, three beds, or one composter, one bed, depending on how many villagers you want. And just enough room for them to maneuver around and collect stuff. Now it's time to get to the real redstone. We're going to go back over to the farm, pull out some pistons, and delete every single block next to all the stairs we placed earlier and, and replace those with pistons. Once you've got all the pistons in place, it should look like this. The one piston per each side of the stairs. Even me, I see I've missed one. Once it's done, you should have one piston on every side of the stairs exposed. So it should look like this. Now we're going to excavate the entire outer perimeter, two blocks deep, until we can see the pistons, like this. You also want to give yourself some room to actually maneuver down here, so you might want to dig in too deep, like this. Right here, it might get tricky. This is by the water elevator. You don't want to break into that water elevator, so you're going to have to be very careful. I would advise starting way over here and just placing blocks down like this. Because it might be hard to reach over there, you might want to put, place the redstone before you place the final block, like this. 
And then working backwards, replace redstone right there, and a block here, with a repeater going into that. And we're going to do something very similar across all four sides. Once we get back over to here again, you see this is very similar to that area over there. We're going to again place a block and a repeater. Just like this. And again, we're going to follow ourselves all the way back to back where we started. And here, again, we're going to place a block with a repeater going into it. Over here is where the signal's gonna come from. And I think that's the next project. Finally getting down to the redstone wiring of the entire project. And we're gonna start off by deleting this entire area and clearing it of all of this dirt. Now once we have dug this out all the way up to the pistons and about as low as the ice road we created earlier, we're gonna start by powering these pistons up. Over on this side, we're gonna put three blocks like this, delete the middle one, and replace that with a torch. And that should power on all the pistons. If it doesn't, as you can see, some of them are missing over there, we have to check and see where we have missed a piece of redstone dust. As you can see here, I forgot to put one right there. And now we have all but those two powered. Those two are a little special. This one is gonna have a single piece of redstone dust coming into a block like this, with a redstone torch on the other side. This one is going to have two repeaters coming out of this block that the torch is powering. And that will turn that one on. So all of them should be activated at this point. Now we're going to work on the clock. And we're going to start down here by this torch. Place a single block here and a piece of redstone dust on either side. Pointing into that block is going to be a comparator. And this is where the hopper clock is going to be. So if we get out our hoppers, we're going to put both of them facing into each other like this. Then we're going to have another comparator like this coming out of this one. And next to these comparators, we're going to have regular pistons like this. And by this piston, we're going to put a block of redstone so we can fill up this hopper. And we're going to fill it up just with 23 items. You might need more or less depending on how laggy your world is, but I found 23 works best. Once you have that filled, we can finish off the clock, and we're going to need to do that by getting out a block. Putting it in front of the comparator, placing a redstone dust on the other side, placing another block, and a repeater pointing into that piston. Now these guys will fight over this block, powering these hoppers, and constantly turning on and off the farm, which is not what we want. So now we have to put a way in to shut it off. This will hold the this piston shut, so after a moment, it'll stay in the on position. See? It's popped up in the on position. In order to toggle this on and off, we're going to need a bit of redstone. So we're going to place redstone right here, pointing into this block, with the comparator pointing into that redstone. Behind that, we're going to need, again, some hoppers and a dropper. We're going to place the dropper right next to that repeater and the hopper pointing into it so the comparator can take a signal out of it. We only need one item in this dropper and a block behind it. And now that part of the clock is done. Now all we need is a way to activate this clock on and off once per day, which is what we're going to use the daylight sensor for. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, and on the fifth block, we're going to place a block of glass with a bit of redstone dust on top. But you can see that this is now powering the farm. It's created a cycle loop. So we're going to place a block above that so it doesn't do that. Next, we're going to place the daylight sensor itself. It's going to sit on top of a sticky piston so you can shut the farm off. You don't need to shut the farm off, per se, but the farm can glitch out and break if you walk away from it. And, like I said before, the villagers can despawn if they're standing on one of these when you walk away. So you want to be able to lock them in there and shut off the farm when it's not running. Next, we're going to tackle powering these hoppers 
and the droppers. So we're going to start here on top of this hopper right here and place some blocks in this shape. So we have four blocks, two blocks, and one block like this. This is where we're going to put our comparator extension. These guys will hold out a little bit longer than the clock underneath to power the droppers for a little bit longer just to squeeze a few more items out of them to ensure that our villagers never run out of items. We're going to want this to go all the way back up and power these droppers. So we're going to put a block with one torch on top and then another block with another torch on top, like this. On top of this torch, we're going to place another block, but this time it's just going to have redstone dust. We're going to delete this, and above this compositor, we're going to place one sticky piston. This is where we're going to put the clock to run these droppers. We're going to use observers to do that. We're going to place one observer facing this way, so you see the arrow is pointing towards the farm. And we're going to go over here, place another observer that's facing this way. And this observer will actually power that dropper right there. But we need, still need to power these two droppers. So we're going to put two blocks right here next to them so we don't power the hoppers above. And we're going to line some blocks from this observer all the way over to here. On the furthest left dropper, we're going to put a, a single repeater. And then all we need is some redstone dust. Put some dust here to power that one, and just line it all up to get from power from this observer. And now, whenever the farm turns on, this observer will be pushed upwards, it'll engage a clock that'll power all three droppers. Now, we need to lock these hoppers so that the droppers don't just shoot right into the hoppers and the villagers miss their opportunity to pick up the items. The villagers are a little slow, and hoppers will pick up the items faster than they do. So we're going to start by placing a block to the right of this torch. Then we're going to place two pieces of redstone coming off of that, and they should be powered. Next, we'll put a repeater going into this block. This is where it gets a little bit cra a little crazy, but we can handle it. We're going to put a block going into that repeater, and a block underneath of that, like this. And we're going to place redstone right there that's going to be powered. Off that redstone, we're going to place another block right here. So it's between this repeater and this block here, and we're going to place another repeater right here, and that should also become powered. And that should power a block. Now we're going to get our torches, and we're going to place three of them. One on top of this block like this, another one right here, and one right here. This torch will power that hopper. This torch with a block on top will power these two hoppers. Once we have all three torches placed, like this, and they're powering those hoppers, we need to be able to take the signal a little bit further to power the rest of the hoppers. So we're going to place a piece of redstone dust right there. No, actually, it's a repeater. Place a repeater right here, which is going to power a piece of redstone dust right here. Then we're going to take the signal from that redstone dust, and we're going to place a block to the left of it, right here. And that will ensure that it's powering that hopper right there. This hopper does not need to be powered because there's only glass blocks above it. But now, we need to be able to close the doors to keep them in there long enough for them to collect the materials they need to plant the farm. So we're going to put a single repeater right here. And a block above it like this. With a piece of redstone dust on top. Now we're going to get our glass. place it right next to the redstone like this, or right above the redstone like this, get back out our redstone, place a block there instead, and now we should be able to power both pistons if this is on. So if you want to check that, delete this redstone dust, and those pistons should activate, closing the door. Make sure you replace that redstone dust. After you've tested it, now it's time to take care of where these hoppers are being sent to. We could easily run a hopper line all the way over there, but that's a little bit expensive. So instead, we're going to run a little bit of a water line here. So right here, we're going to put a dropper. 
Like this. Underneath that... We're gonna run some ice. And we're gonna be aiming for this block right here. We gotta be very careful, because it will destroy our redstone. So we're not gonna break into there just yet. But we're gonna run our ice, like this. So we're gonna have one, two, three ice. Then we're gonna take a left turn, go one, two, three, more ice, like this. So the final shape should be like this. Next, we're gonna bring in some regular blocks that can close the whole area. Like that. And once it's enclosed, we get placed in some water. Next, we're going to want to get a sign out. And we're going to delete this block. But make sure that all blocks on either side are covered so this does not leak. Because it will damage your redstone. So we're going to delete that block. And we're going to get some backflow, but that's okay. Because we're going to cover it up right now with a sign, like this. So that means that anything that comes into that dropper will be fired and put into the line to go back up there. Now that we have the ice rod in place, we need a way to power this. It's not quite as simple as putting in a comparator clock to power it like we did below, because there's not much room here to take a signal out and power it. So instead, we're going to have to have a continuously running clock power this. But unlike with the observer clock, we're not going to be able to have one that works like this, because this can be broken by lag. We're going to need something that's more adjustable, so I developed a cop a uh, comparator redstone clock that should work perfectly fine on a realm. And actually, it was a realm that inspired this change in the design. So we're going to take a regular block right here, right next to the ice, right next to the block that we're powering, which is this one right here, and place a block below it. Then we're going to delete that block right next to the ice, and place a bit of redstone. Then we're going to go over here, and above this dust that's part of the Compared to our extension, we're going to place another block. And that's so the redstone does not connect to this redstone, which is going to be right here. Now, we're going to place a comparator on top of this block right here. So we'll have this shape here. So we have this block, this block, and this block, and this block. We don't need this block. But we do need a comparator right there. And that is the one that's going to be running the whole clock. Behind that, we're going to place... A sticky piston over here. Delete that block. And again, so that's going to be a water source block. That's why it's stone. But for now, it's just a regular block. We're going to place a sticky piston against it like this. And a chest right in front of it. Right now, we can't open that chest. So we're going to place it way over here and just wait for the sticky piston to activate to grab it. And we're going to place a single item in here. We want it to be a stackable item up to 64, like a rail or something like that. As you can see, now the clock is on. But it's not blinking like a clock should, and that's because we need to hook something else up. Below this block right here that the computer is facing it to, we're going to put a repeater. And that repeater is going to pull power out of this. It's going to power the block directly below the computer, and we're going to pull out a signal from the other side of the computer, down here. And we're just going to allow this to snake up underneath the chest and behind the comparator all the way up to the side of the comparator, which should activate the clock. Now, this clock is much better than an observer clock because you can delay it like this. You can slow it down considerably. And if you're having lag in your world or if this clock gets stuck, you can always change it like that. Now we're going to work on the on-off switch. So we're going to go back up to the AFK area. We have this two wide wall here, so we're going to go back one like this. And over four, counting from this block. So one, two, three, four. We can also extend the floor out, so we can actually walk over here. And on this sixth block, so one, two, three, four, five, six, is where we're going to put our lever. And this lever is going to do a number of things. But first, we have to hook it up. So we're going to put a piece of glass right behind it like this, and a bit of redstone. And we want to flip the lever to make sure that the redstone turns on. First thing we're going to hook it up to is this thing right here. 
which is the chest minecart. So, we're going to get out our building blocks again. And we're going to pull this out this way, like this. We're going to go over to this glass block and put one below it like this and over to the right with a bit of redstone on top. Then we're going to get our regular block, place it right there next to the glass going towards this area. We're going to get it a uh, torch out. Place a bit of redstone. And then off that redstone, again towards that area. We're going to place a block. And off this block, but this time towards the farm, we're going to place a single torch. And then we're going to connect this up all the way over to here. So you can see. Let's connect it all the way over to this block. And we're going to get back out the redstone. We're going to all the way over here. And you can now see the chest should be moving back and forth. Next, we're going to come back over to the glass right behind the lever. So, the levers. So, the lever's right here. The glass is here. And we're going to slowly snake our way down. Our first stop is going to be this right here, which is the door. We want to be able to trap the villagers in there whenever we turn off the farm. So, we're going to put a repeater right here, like that. Which will shut off the farm whenever we flip that lever and lock them inside. But that means they can only shut the farm off at night. You have to wait for them to be in, or at least you have to know that they're in there. And you can create a little window here, if you want, to let peek at them to see if they're in there or not. And and if you know they're in there, you can't shut it off. But it's safest to shut it off at night, because at that point you know that they're definitely sleeping. And you can trap them in there. And if you check, we should be able to shut off the lever now, shut off that chest, and close the door. So if any villagers are in there, they'll be stuck, and they would not be able to cross over any boundaries and become uh, despawned. If we switch back on the lever, or off the lever, everything should return to normal. So that should be powered, and that should be open. Next, we're going to have to hook it up to the final bit, which is the clock. We're going to have to have a way to be able to turn off this clock here and the daylight sensor. But And over here, we don't need any glass blocks. We can use regular blocks, like this. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to put two regular blocks like this. So instead of glass, we step. We're going to put two regular blocks. And make sure you're continuing the redstone up, down from up there. You can see the stairs like this. But then it goes over here with the redstone. And there's going to be a torch right here. And that'll extend towards this. As you can see, the clock is still running because right now the farm is in the on position. Uh, up is on. Next, we're going to bring it all the way down here to the daylight sensor. And that's really easy, actually. Now we have the on switch hooked up all the way. If you want to make sure that the redstone's cracked, you'll have two redstone dust coming out of the piston, going up some stairs like this, going back here to power this torch, and then continuing up the glass elevator we're building to power the door with the repeater, going up to power this torch, to power that chest. And again, if we flick the lever, just to make sure we didn't break anything, we can see that that's off. That's off, but I still hear it ticking. And that's because that has not retracted, so obviously we've done something wrong. This block here needs a glass. There we go. This block also needs a glass. And that's because of the daylight sensor. So if we look back over here, let's see what I did here. This is the water tunnel coming from over here, the dropper we built a little bit earlier. We need to make sure that these two blocks are glass. So they're glass right next to the tower. Right there and there. And they're two blocks away from this repeater that controls the door. That one needs to be glass, so the redstone can travel all the way down. This one needs to be glass because of this, the daylight sensor. The daylight sensor needs clear access to the sky, which means that this entire path all the way up here cannot be obstructed. You have to be able to see the sky from here. And I'll show you that with a different color glass. This entire pathway cannot be obstructed. Oh, it has to all be transparent. 
And on this version of the game, slabs and stairs are transparent. So you could use slabs, stairs, or anything like that of any type. Pistons are also transparent. So you could have those here. But that has to have some access to the sky level. If you surround this whole building with blocks, you just have to remember, that it, for, the far, for the farm to work, this has to be open. And that's just one block to the right of the daylight sensor right here. Now, you should have all the redstone completed. If you turn it on with a lever, remember up is on, you'll hear the ticking, you'll see the mine cart go back and forth, and the farm should be able to activate now. Now that we have the farm working, it's imperative that we start getting it all ready for villagers. The first step is obviously the water, and to get a hoe and till the soil. So, first we're going to need to put in the water, and we're going to need to fill each one of these spaces up with water. Each stair should get its own source block. Once you got them all filled in, you can start tilling the soil. Oh, and the center one also needs filled in, so this hydrates the area immediately around it. Once you've got all the soil tilled, you want to go over to the farm, shut it off, and when it becomes day, turn it back on. All the pistons should retract and all the water should flow directly into that hole. You want to look at it very carefully and make sure that anything that drops in this area will be going into that. And it looks like we've got it all perfectly correct. And after a moment, the red pistons will push back up, and that clock will stop working. As you can see right now, it's triggering those dispensers, or droppers. And now it's not. Which means our farm is now in order. The next step is to enclose this area and make it safe for villagers. Because monsters will try to kill them. They can sense them regardless if they can see them. It's particularly zombies, of course. So, we got to make it villager safe. Villager safety number one is making sure they can't escape this area and nothing can get into this area. These pistons are a bit of a point of contention because villagers are not that smart. They will stand on the piston and get pushed up and get suffocated. So it's important to actually put glass on top of these pistons so you don't accidentally kill your villagers. It also makes a nice way to see into the farm to see if they're actually planting or if there's anything wrong. So you want to go too high on each piston with glass. Right there, you could switch it out for glass if you wanted. But you have to be careful, you don't want it to flood the, all the redstone. Just fill these all in with two block high glass. Once you got the glass all filled in, you also want to cover the corners, because if a villager comes up to this corner, a zombie can hit them through the corner. Remember that these corner blocks don't necessarily need to be glass, but it can be nice to actually see into the yard and make sure that you know what they're doing. Because eventually, your villagers might be up to something you don't like. Or they might not be planting. It's good always to check on them and make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to. Once you've got the glass all around the sides too high and covered up the corners so no zombies can bite them and get their way through, you want to be able to cover the top. Villagers can jump, and they will jump and trample crops. For example, this particular spot here will keep getting trampled by them. They'll run here, down here too fast, and jump like maniacs. So, in to ensure that they don't break the rest of your farm by jumping, you're going to have to cover it exactly three blocks tall, blocks tall, so they can do nothing to damage the farmland. Because that's something you would have to fix if they did. And if it's two blocks tall, they have no room to jump and no room to damage the farmland. Now you want to include lights, because this farm does most of its growing at night. You're going to need to have this area lit up so the f crops have a chance to grow. So, it doesn't matter really where you place them. I like to place them in the corners, and a couple in the center. But just as long as everything's lit up. And there's plenty of light down there for this stuff to grow. Finally, you should go down here, 
and ensure that there's no way that a mob can get close to the villagers. And as you can see, right there, they can't get close. They can't bite them through the stair block. So you want to cover up the stair block so nobody can get up there. I've had some instances where they've all died because they've been attacked by zombies through the stairs. So you want to cover it up to make sure that they can't get it through. Like that. And at that point, all you need to do is add the villagers, and I'll show you how to do that. Well, here we are in survival, on a realm no less, owned by another YouTuber named Slack Lizard. He's actually a really cool guy. And right in front of me, I have a villager, and the farm I built in Creative actually built in survival. So this does work on a realm. I actually made some changes not too long ago to make sure it always works. And we just need to get our last villager up here. When it comes to villagers, though, if you want to add them to this farm, you have to fill up their inventory completely with whatever crop you want to use. So you either need to fill them up with seeds, carrots, potatoes, or beetroot seeds. And you'll need eight stacks of whatever you choose. If you want to get these guys into the farm, I suggest making a little area where you can keep them safe, throw seeds to them, or whatever you're using, and then a water tunnel that'll take them up all the way to the top level, and then just a little path where you can break some blocks and push them in. It's really quite simple to get them in as long as you can get them all the way over here. And I do have a tutorial on how to move villagers too coming along, as well as how to breed them. It'll be much shorter than this one. Very simple. Well, I'll get back to you after I get this guy eat more stacks of seeds, because that's what the farm I'm using is based off of. And I'll show you what my AFK session was like. Well, I've shut the farm off after going AFK, and we'll just be able to see how many bushels of wheat we've gotten. As you can see, we've got a couple stacks. It's not too bad for a couple hours AFK. I think this farm's doing pretty nice. As you can see, they're all still farmers. They're all still farming. Though I've shut it when I shouldn't have. You only should shut it off when it's night, so they're all locked in there. Well, I hope you like the farm. It might be a little bit too complicated for some of you, but that's okay. I had a quite a I had a great time building it. And I'm very proud of it. So, I hope you had a great day today, and if not, there's always tomorrow, and I'll see you then.